Shay 45 is the morning after, and I'm Angela Yee, and Roy Jones Jr. is here this morning. This is exciting for me, because boxing is really the only sport that I watch. That's all right. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so, and, you know, you're like one of the biggest boxers <laughs> of all time. You were named, like, the boxer of the decade, as a matter of fact. In the 90s, I was a pretty bad boy, you know? <laughs> you were a bad boy. <laughs> do you party a lot? Because I don't no, really hear too much about you doing anything. No, I don't do a lot of party, you know. I'm more of a guy who's just like to kind of stay in the background to be my time to shine. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I'm an instrument that God plays this beautiful music through, and it's, it happens in the boxing ring, nowhere else. Okay. Now, this next fight coming up against uh, Bernard Hopkins, April 3rd, right, in uh, Mandalay Vegas. Bay. Yep. At the Mandalay Bay. This is a pay-per-view fight? Yeah, HBO pay-per-view. HBO, for a while you were commentating. Mm -hmm. That seems... was the best day I've ever had. They don't want to get it, but I was the best day I've ever had. It was one day? Yeah, you know I say, you the, you the best. I was the best. <laughs> So what happened with that? I thought it was well, a, a permanent thing. It was. It, it, it's just a lot of situations took place, and um, I guess you know people just really wasn't feeling the way it was going. I wasn't feeling the way the situation was either, so we just parted ways. But you know, maybe one day I'll get back to doing it again. Right. Because I read somewhere they said that like you were missing meetings or something like production, that. Production meetings. But it was like the only reason I was missing the production meetings was because I didn't want to come in that early because, like you said, I'm not a party. Mm -hmm. I felt like my job was a boxing analyst, which right. means analyze the fight. Not what the guy did yesterday, not what the guy going to do tomorrow, not what the guy did six months before he started training for the fight, but my job was to tell the fans what he needed to do to win the fight or why he wasn't winning the fight and what the other guy needed to do or what they needed to change. My job was to analyze the fight. Somehow I got mixed in with doing the production meetings and all too. I know, because I happened to see that one, and I was like, oh, shit, Ray Jones Jr. is commentating now. Yeah, I was, I was, people still call me, and I said, man, you need to go back to commentating. We don't understand what's going on unless you talk. Right. All right. I mean, it only makes sense. Exactly. You know, for somebody who's been in the ring, like you have. All right, so I also hear that you have a rematch with Danny Green after this fight with Bernard Hopkins already scheduled. Is that true? Yeah, that's very true. Okay, why, why a rematch? Well, I had a rematch call signed just in case something like something like what happened had happened. Because yeah, I heard there was to, some griminess yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah, when you go to, when you go to a different situation like that with different countries, you know, my last experience was horrible. So I said, get me a rematch clause from going out the country because last time I went out the country, I got robbed of gold medal. Okay. Well, I went out the country again and got shafted again. They let him use an illegal rap on me, which basically resulted in him knocking me down in the first round. But I got up, and he wore, wore himself out trying to knock me out and couldn't. Mm -hmm. Then once he get wore out, they stopped the fight. Wait a minute, what y'all doing? It's my turn now. So I had a rematch clause in case something like that happens. And it's cool. I'm glad we didn't go with one round because with that cast, he probably would have hit me about 40 or 50 times with the next couple rounds because we was going to go toe-to-toe -to because -toe I was a little bit upset by then. Mm -hmm. Then he was going to get knocked out. But I didn't need to take that with that cast at 41 years old. Now, the gold medal situation, that's when you were way younger in the Olympics. Soul career, yep. Right. Worst, Olymp worst boxing decision in the history of Olympic boxing. And that, that was something that they even admitted was a mistake. Yeah, they admitted and still won't change and still didn't give me a gold medal. So it's like if you catch a crime on tape, that you got there it is, convicted. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They kept, got the crime on tape and won't overturn the decision. Boxing is kind of a... It's something else. <laughs> That's why I don't want my kids in it. You, oh, you don't want your you kids know, in it? No, I don't want my kids in it. I like them okay. doing the music like they're doing. <laughs> uh, they, I got 3D, my two sons and my little cousin doing their thing. Uh, you check them out at thegroup3d.com. Then my, my youngest son, I think he's going to play basketball. So. Okay, were they interested in boxing and you... Yeah, they were, but I ain't, I didn't steer them away. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like I didn't try to, try to push them to go that way. If they go there, you can't stop them. Because there's a lot of times that I've watched um, fights that are decisions, and you're like, wow, that's a decision. You know, that's not the fight. It happens all the time, and that's why I tell people if I didn't have to, if I didn't know, if I know what I know now, I probably wouldn't have boxed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow, really? Well, but you've been so successful at it, and it's I shouldn't say that because this is what God put me here to do. So yeah, I should have boxed. Okay, all right. So let's go back to this Danny Green in Australia. So he had his he had the cast wrapped around his hand. He said Basically, like he wrapped two hours early. Why are you wrapping two hours early unless mm -hmm. you're trying, trying to do something illegal? Then once I figured out, they tell they tell my people, well, if Roy don't come out, no. At first they said, no, we're not making him rewrap his hands. As a matter of fact, we're not going to let y'all look at the wraps no more. And if he don't come out, we're going to disqualify him. So if I don't come out to fight and the people don't really understand why, how am I going to get back to the United States? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, Damn, that's crazy. Exactly. It's a bad situation. Because it was a disappointment to people because Bernard Hopkins was also mm -hmm. fighting, mm -hmm. you know, at the same Most time. Most definitely. Most definitely. Was a high, it was a big disappointment. And like I said, although he had a cast on, all they still do was leave him alone. And he was still whooped. I don't care what he had on. Cast and all, I still was going to beat him. See, he didn't think I would get up from the shop from the cast. But once mm -hmm. I got up and I realized what was happening, my head was used to it, and I, I got the feel for what it was, it was time to go. And they knew that, so they stopped the fight because he was wild. Had they not stopped the fight, he still would have got beat. 
All right, 888 Shay 45 is the number. Call us up. Roy Jones Jr. is here with us this morning, and um, we're going to continue on that note because I have some more questions about what's going on in boxing and, of course, you know, with you. You're going to beat Bernard Hopkins, right? I'm going to beat Bernard Hopkins. I beat him one time with a left hand. No, I can beat him with two. <laughs> okay.